All right, hey guys, I'm back in front of the camera this time. Um, sorry, I've been away. Things kind of escalated and escalated and escalated. Um, work's changed a lot. I haven't had time to do much of anything. Um, but I hope you guys are liking the Temtem videos. I'm doing those as I can, um, and I'll continue to do those. Um, bit of channel housekeeping before anything goes further. Um, as we all know, Eagle Moss is no more. Um, I finished the uh, GTR. I'll be putting out a video on that in the future. Um, I'm not going to continue with it. I know I need I have a few packs left of the engine, but since uh, IXO Collections took it over, they're a French company, I'm not about to get that craziness happening. So, I'm going to leave it. Um, as far as the Enterprise goes, there's no set launch date for it. Um, but I am picking up where I left off, which is stage 13, 14. I know I didn't post any videos on that, but things went haywire in the, um, the editing process. So, I will show you where I got to before restarting those videos. Um... I'm also doing an Iron Man. That's not going to be video. Those was that was mostly for me. Um, I'm on. I finished pack 19, which is starting the chest bit. So, I'm gonna move forward on that. But I figured I'd go back to my roots today and do a third party. In fact, an Iron Factory Transformer video. So. We'll get the camera flipped around, and we'll start with that, huh? Let's go. And back behind the camera I am. Hello. Um, so this is Iron Factory's IFEX51, I believe it's number 51. Uh, Power Falcon. And this is their take on, I believe it's an IDW-esque uh, power glide. The red A-10 styled jet. You can see here in the nice crimson color. Got some nice black for the cockpit section. Some awesome silver on the intakes there. A very unique design. Very difficult to transform into this state. Um, as you know, most Iron Factory figures are... Actually, all of them are packed in robot mode. Getting him into this mode was the toughest thing I've ever done because... Certain bits move in such a way that it's hard to figure out, and the instructions aren't very well laid out when it comes to it. So, that's him. Um, I haven't done any sort of measurement on him, and I don't have a tape measure here to uh, figure it out, but as a comparison, I have brought in... Starscream, Iron Factory Seeker Mold, that's how they look together, obviously he's got a, obviously Power Glide has a wider wingspan than he, than uh, Starscream does, but that's how that is. This is the best I can do with the um, with what I have, but that's 
for comparison there. It looks really good. I like that they're doing the mini bots now. Very fun. Very, very fun. And to transform him, uh, actually before we go into that, I forgot about his accessory, his uh, gun. Oh, I pegged it in really tight. I wasn't expecting it to be that tight, but there we go. His little gun pegs into his back end here. There's two little slots for that. And it's basically a matter of flipping out the barrel. And flipping up the handle. There it is. Very simple transformation. Set that off to the side and we'll begin on him. Now, as I've mentioned in, at the start, he's kind of fiddly, so he's gonna take some doing. Uh, first thing you do, take his little landing gear, which goes right there, right into his, that spot there. Um, you're then going to take this back stabilizer section, gonna bend his foot back. At this point, you can take the two fins and swing them around like so, so they're facing each other. And you kinda wanna move things in such a way so you can get stuff over stuff. There we go. Because, as you can see here, this section is on a slider, so once you get it up and over this cape section, you can slide the intakes down, and then push the stabilizer bits in, like that. You're going to actually turn the feet so they're facing that way, I believe. Oh, no, no. They're going to be facing towards each other. Because at this point, you want to raise his arms, rotate this, you're going to split the cape, and you're going to Angle it like so. So you're going to actually turn his legs this way so that the fins here are facing outwards. Bear, bear with me, I've only done this like once or twice total, so it's hard. Then all you do is you rotate him at the waist. You can then bring the cape panels or the butt, pa butt plate back. Keep those out of the way. You're gonna take the cockpit, lift it up like so, flip the nose gun, Flip that in. You're going to take this piece, you're going to pull it away from his head, rotate it, and collapse it down over the wheel, so the, only the wheel is showing. That will then allow you to turn his head around. Keep that down. Again, bear with me, it has been some time since I did this. Um, I think I want to keep these rotated out of the way for now. Because they want us to... Yeah, okay.
keep the cockpit out of the way. And you're going to actually rotate him that far. Okay. So then you can get these cape bits down. You're going to fold the wings, you're going to rotate it out like this, and down, and you're actually going to peg the wings in, like so. There we go. You can put his cockpit section down on his back. Repeg his back cape section. Because what you're going to do is you're going to try and wiggle out the arm. It may come undone from the shoulder piece, but that's okay. Stupid tight. Okay. So that's how one arm is supposed to be. I'll try to show it a little better. So the wing comes in two pieces. You can actually see the join right there. You want to make sure they're separated. Then you unfold his arm you rotate it at the bicep you can swing that piece of the wing up onto his arm fold out his fist and Bob's your uncle and that is how you do power glide how I do power glide, how I how you would transform power glide. Excuse me. And he has his fiddle factor, like they all do, because you know th something at this size is very fiddly. But what he does do, he does well. Anyways, um, so let's take a good look at his head there. Very Power Glide esque. Nice blue eyes in there. Those are hard to see, but they are blue. I don't know if I can get a good light on it. Let's see. Oh, they're there. A little blue. I'm just using my cell phone camera for this. Uh, articulation, his head is on a ball joint, you know, having big fingers it's hard to move, arms have the multiple joints from the uh, transformation, so you have rotation here at the shoulder, you can go in and out, but because he's power glide and he's got bits of his wings as his shoulders, you kind of whack himself in the head. Um, you actually have the true shoulder joint here. And I'm sorry I'm going out of frame. I'm just looking over the camera as I'm doing this. Um, and it's been a while, so bear with me. Um, you got a double-jointed elbow, which, which gives you a decent curl that way. You have more... Reverse elbow, but that is for transformation. Uh, the wrists, the hands themselves only go in. That's stupid tight. I might have to drop 
like put a, a toothpick worth of oil on that pin just to loosen it up, but I don't move it too much. It's actually the first time I've fiddled with him extensively since I've gotten him. Um, you saw the waist swivel. Got the universal leg joints. You can go forward. You can go back, but they bump into the butt plate. Outward, all the way. As Emgo likes to say, the full splits. Uh, double jointed knee. You can hear it clicking. You get full, full range. There, you get a ball jointed ankle, so you get the full rotation. Each of these toe fins is on a joint, and then you also have the um, chicken legged idea if you want to go with that. And since he has unique hands, he can hold his slot-barreled weapon nice and securely, just like that. And him having that slotted port, I think it's meant to go on... That side, yeah. He's meant to be left-handed. The um, two tabs that hold the gun to his alt mode kind of sit off at that weird, you see that, a 90 degree angle there. So it clips a little better on his left arm so that the tab has something to clip onto. It actually looks a little cleaner, so he's going to be a southpaw in my collection. I just noticed that. Anyways, for size comparison, here he is next to the Iron Factory Seeker Mold. And while they looked similar in of size in their alternate modes, by the fact that he is a mini-bot, he is significantly shorter. And it's hard to tell from this angle... I'm going to see if I can get down a bit. Collapse my tripod so I can try and get it closer. He is a good head and a half shorter. Top of his head to the top of head, that head, that's a good finger width, maybe a little bit more. A finger height, maybe a little more. That's substantial. Yeah, setting that at the top of Powerglide's head, it just comes to the top of Starscream's cockpit. He is tiny, which is which makes a lot of sense compared, you know, considering the mini bot stature. But I love this little thing. It is nice. I think it may be an actual IDW design. Or a modified IDW design, but it looks immaculate. From the tan off-white bits to the crimson to the silver, the graph, the uh, graphite color, the you know the tags of blue here and there, just amazing. But anyways, that is Iron Factory IF EX fifty one. Power Falcon. A great little figure. Worth the price if you can find him cheap. Um, he's still in stock, if I remember correctly, so you shouldn't have an issue finding him. The only thing I kind of wish were tighter were the sliders for his knees. All in all, good figure. Great to add into your collection to pair with the other mini-bots. Um... And the next mini bot will be on its way in the next video. So until until next time, 
Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment down below if you want me to add anything to the mix. I'll take those under advisement. And stay frosty, you know, like you're always supposed to do. I mean it. Stay frosty. <laughs>